Yesterday, on 11th of July, we have been commemorating uh, the terrible massacre which happened in uh, Srebrenica in 1995. Um, I think it is really important that we talk about what happened there, but there is also this huge discussion about is it a genocide or is it not a genocide? And the question is still, why is it so important to talk about it as a genocide or not, since we all know, and I think it's undis undisputed, that it has been one of the gross human rights violations. It was crimes against humanity. So why is it important, but still to talk about what happened in Srebrenica? I think it is important to accept the facts and the fact was, as you said, there was at least a massacre. If uh, it was a genocide, one can doubt. And I don't think this discussion is really important because if you say it's a genocide, you say it's the worst thing ever. If you deny it's a genocide, then you deny the killings, the, the determination of uh, the Serb side, in this case, of killing people. Uh, and, of course, of uh, UN troops who did not intervene, who were um, absent, who were looking to the other side, maybe legally correct, but morally very incorrect. So I think it is important to commemorate what happened, to discuss what happened, to look who has been responsible, but not in the sense of uh, always again and again say these Serbs are bad and were bad and will be bad forever, but in explaining also the conditions which led to Srebrenica, this nationalistic uh, extremism. So I think that's important because uh, national, uh, nationalistic extremism is not uh, disappearing, not in that region, not in other regions of this world, and therefore it is important to commemorate the effects, the results of this extremism. I think it is uh, very important, as you said, also for the topic of uh, reconciliation. We are now also talking about 30 years uh, of the breakup of Yugoslavia, and recently we have been doing many interviews with diplomats, with people from the region, experts, but also from the young generation who have been talking about how important reconciliation is for them. And now we also know that just recently there was the verdict against, against Mladic again. And what I think is really important, it is important to establish facts, as you said before, that's one of the, the main purposes also, it's part of, of a reconciliation process, but it's probably not enough, because what we should do is never forget about the victims. And once all the newspapers and everyone only speaks about Mladic and what he has been doing, we tend to forget about the victims, and they should actually be in the center, and they should have been those given um, most attention. And I think this is one of the main uh, topics which are not really that widely discussed, as in my opinion they should be. Um, another reason is uh, for our reconciliation. We talked about it also, that it happened 30 years ago. I mean, uh, it's a lot, but I mean, uh, the wars have been manifold, there have been many atrocities, but 30 years is not really the, the longest time if you look at how long reconciliation processes also take time in other countries. I mean, when we talk about France and Germany, when we talk about Germany just recently accepting the genocide in Namibia, for example, which was more than 100 years ago. And so we tend to forget about that 30 years might be long, but in the end, it might not be long enough to get into the process, because the process is probably not enough. As Vesna Pusic said it, the former foreign minister of uh, Croatia, the reconciliation is not a process with a beginning and an end, and then it's done. It's a way of life, and you have to somehow include the people, and not only the judges, not only talking about facts, it's important, but it's only part of the game. So what do you think about this? Yes, I think I fully agree with you. First of all, on the victim. If we cannot win the victim to the, for the reconciliation process, it doesn't function. Maybe some of the perpetrators even would be ready to reconcile, but that's not the issue. The, the victims have to be respected, and respect for, of the victim and the victimhood is a basis for winning them for reconciliation. Uh, that, that's very important, and that must be very broad. And therefore, I think uh, all those political forces who want to use Srebrenica, for example, for their own petty political game should be repudiated. But of course, again, uh, victims have to be involved, and the, the families and their friends and, and their uh, relatives and so on. On the other hand, of course, it is true it, it is an ongoing process. It must be an ongoing process. Even between Germany and France, especially Germany and Poland, there are open issues. And again and again, there are requests for 
compensation, there is a discussion who was involved in killing Jews in Poland, were only the Germans or not all, also Polish uh, people who helped uh, the Germans in doing their dirty game. So I think that, that is important uh, to see it as a long-term process and that's uh, the issue also for the Balkans and that's also to make it clear that what happened in the Balkan was also responsible of the international community of Europe in a way because uh, UN soldiers from Europe uh, looked at it and uh, looked away and did not intervene. And so the reconciliation process is also something which is a European task at least, if not an international task. And therefore we from the International Institute for Peace together with other institutes and the, the Western Balkan groups are engaged in this issue of reconciliation because it's not only something the people in the region have to do. Yes, they have to do their job. But we have also to be involved and also to look and to demonstrate to the public it's not only a Balkan issue. These Balkan people who always have to crawl. No, it's a European issue. And very for a very long time, the Balkan and the Balkan people were misused by European powers and uh, brought against each other. So it's a European task. I agree. I think reconciliation should happen everywhere where conflicts are, and conflicts are manifold. And once atrocities are happening, I think it is also very important that we don't like blame it all on the Serbs, because we know that this is one of the difficult top, uh, topics when it also comes to emotions. That all of them, like even the younger generation, still feels a little bit about guilty, so that the other, the outside world, has to feel we were the only perpetrators. I think this is probably not truth, but nevertheless, we should talk about what happened, establishing facts is part of a process of reconciliation, but also talking about, as you said already before, what actually were the conditions which made these excessive violence possible. We should talk about this as well. And then, of course, we also need a political leadership who embraces like all this issue in order for a future which is in line with human rights and also which puts the victims at the center of their um, agenda. Fully agree. There's not much to add. Uh, of course, uh, it would be too easy and would be wrong to say, yeah, everybody did mistakes. Everybody was killing and did uh, committed uh, crimes. Uh, of course, there were different levels of, of crimes and different extremism behind it. But that there was a nationalistic extremism and, and uh, uh, really force done against the other ethnic communities is true for all ethnic communities. Nevertheless, of course, Srebrenica is, let's say, a symbol for what happened. And uh, we should commemorate Srebrenica, but we should not forget that there has been other actis, activities and other acts of violence and crime. And uh, should not forget to look forward and create the basis of reconciliation.